Oakville Town Council approved an emerald ash borer work plan this year for 2010, which takes a rather aggressive approach to tackling this emerald ash borer problem. And the work plan consists of four main foundations. The first and largest is the ash tree treatment program, which is the largest municipal ash tree protection program in Canada and consists of 1,600 selected Oakville street and park trees which are being treated with the product Triazin in order to protect the canopy as well as to reduce the beetle population in high infested parts of Oakville. So the ash tree treatment program is foundation number one. The second part of the work plan that Council approved was to take the inventory project to a higher plane and by that we mean we've had a, an aircraft recently fly over the town of Oakville and photograph all the 177,000 ash trees both on public and private property throughout Oakville and this plane was equipped with a special camera to identify the ash trees and no other municipality in Canada has ever done this before and we'll be able to expect to share this information with residents in the coming months so that they'll know if they have an ash tree and the state of infestation of that ash tree. The third part of the work plan consists of the trapping program as part of the partnership initiatives that the town is outreached for. And what we mean by partnerships program is that we have research projects in conjunction with the Canadian Forest Service uh, and the Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources and Bioforest Technologies. And each of these research projects is geared to a specific part of understanding emerald ash borer biology and ash tree response to it. And these result, the results of these projects are going to benefit everybody. And the fourth part of the work plan is communications because any plan is only as good as its support from the community and we really need the buy-in from the residents of Oakville. Why? Because almost 80% of the ash tree canopy in Oakville is actually on private property. That means in order for Oakville's canopy, ash tree canopy program to be effective, the town of Oakville needs help from the residents. Wow, enormous benefits. First of all, the beauty visually of when you're driving down the street and it's just a wonderful alley, a canopy of, of uh, leaf structure that just um, presents itself as being a lovely shady spot to live. And then there's the physical protection of all the landscaping in the homes. Um, we re we uh, rely on the benefit of the shade for our gardens because they've been built with having the shade in mind. If we were to lose the trees, we, we'd be back where we were 30 years ago, virtually scorched. This is an ash tree. And the way we can tell it's an ash tree in the summertime it has a characteristic leaf that has seven leaflets on a single main stalk. This is a, from a healthy ash tree and this is from an infested ash tree. You can see the difference in size due to the, inf the impacts of the emerald ash borer. So this leaf has come from this tree. What we've done specially for this tree to show residents what a, inside of a tree looks like, we've actually cut out what's called a bark window. So we simply removed the outer protective bark to expose the conductive tissue inside the tree. Conductive tissue is made up of cells called phloem and xylem which is equivalent in humans to veins and arteries. And why EAB is so lethal is because it ruins the conductive tissue. And it does so in the winter time when it changes from a insect beetle to an insect larvae. And here's examples of larvae that we've taken from ash trees in the winter time. And these legless white grubs is what the EAB looks like in the winter. And this legless white grub does this very characteristic feeding gallery in this pattern all along the conductive tissue which is an equivalent to cutting in human terms our veins and arteries so the tree can no longer conduct tissue and fluids along the this uh, phloem and xylem and so it kills the tree. Every ash tree is assessed individually before treatment. Um, what we look for is full dark green foliage um, we are able to inject trees up to 30% crown dieback, which would look something like this ash tree. This tree would be borderline, so we're willing to inject it in the hopes that we can um, save this tree, but in two years it will be reassessed again before its next injection. If you want a nice green full canopy, uh, we can treat once a tree starts dying back, but there is a threshold 
that we need to look for. The tree is paying between $160 and $190 per tree, so even a tree with foliage and crown to this extreme, we're willing to inject it and try and protect it for at least a two-year period. So I'm president of Bioforest Technologies and uh, in collaboration with the Canadian Forest Service we developed Triazin, which is the product now being used to uh, protect ash from emerald ash borer. We've been working with the town uh, going back several years, I guess beginning with gypsy moth and now uh, more recently with emerald ash borer. And, uh, uh, we are a pest management company, uh, we specialize in that, and uh, we've worked with the town to develop a strategy for uh, managing emerald ash borer, minimizing the economic impacts, and uh, just trying to deal with a, a pretty serious problem. When a pest like EAB comes along, it's, it's not just the town of Oakville's problem or the, you know, the residents' problem, it's, it's a national problem. It's going to affect most of the provinces in Canada, wherever ash is, 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 a, is a species. And, you know, I think government has a role to play. I think they should be paying attention to what's going on in Oakville because I think the template that's being built here may be used elsewhere. And they should be part of the solution rather than standing back and perhaps just letting everyone go off on their own. So I'd like to see greater in, uh, provincial and federal involvement for sure. I think. Uh, it, it is a national problem. It's not, not restricted to Oakville or Ontario or even Canada. So it's, uh, there's, there's room for everyone to get involved here. Um, it's a project with the CFIA, which is um, trying to detect and figure out exactly where the emerald ash borer is in which areas of Oakville and of Burlington. Right, so there's a lure inside of the trap, which smells like an ash leaf, and it attracts the beetle to the trap and it gets stuck on here and then in two weeks time when I come around I take it down and I find the beetle, put it into my vial and I send it off to get analyzed in the lab in Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, it depends on the population density of the beetle, it depends on the area. In this area um, probably around five per trap every two weeks. In all of Oakville there's roughly 125 traps and I'm also monitoring 40 traps in the city of Burlington as well. So I check all sides of the trap looking for the beetle and I see one right here. So I open up my vial and I pluck it off right here. And you see on the other side, more metallic belly. And I put it into the vial. And there we go. Hello, my name is Jalil Hashemi. I am Supervisor of Forest Protection in the town of Oakville. You saw Andres and Alexandra, two forestry crews, are collecting data for town trees. Andres is using a laser device to measure the height of the tree and to measure the canopy height. And also it can be used to measure the width of the canopy. And Alexandra is entering it into a computer which will be transferred to our tree database uh, in the town of Oakville. So tree inventory will identify details about species composition, diameter, height, canopy cover the dimensions, and also provide us with maintenance recommendations and management options. We also GPS the location of each tree and we uh, put it in a customized map. In future, you can log into the town of Oakville website and find those trees in the parks and in front of your property with some of the most important data collected as a part of that information system. In 2005, we implemented Urban Forest Effect Model Project, known as U4 Project. As a result, we know there are 1.9 million trees in the town of Oakville. Environmental benefit that these trees provide of ecological services is over $2.1 million a year. In order to manage this valuable asset, the very first step and the most important step is to know the resources. Tree Inventory Project is uh, targeting this important objective. By doing that, we are going to be able to manage our forest more effectively, maximize the benefit, and minimize the health and the structural problem related to uh, our urban forests. Other valuable information that we can obtain from our tree inventory is to know the location and the presence of rare and endangered species and susceptibility of our urban forest to major pest and disease. 
as a result of our inventory. Now we know that we do have 13,800 ash trees in parks and along the streets in the town of Oakville. All of them are highly susceptible to a destructive pest called emerald ash borer. But we know this is just 20% of the ash canopy cover and 80% of ash canopy cover are in your properties, in private properties. To define the location of those ashes, we are implementing a project using the most cost-effective technology, hyperspectral imaging technology, with a consultant from United States, for the very first time in Canada, to locate and define the location of ash trees on private property. Thank you. We admire the ash tree. It is a component of urban municipal forestry programs that make up about 10% of the urban forest. Why? Well, many years ago when the American elm was decimated by the Dutch elm disease, ironically ash was planted as a substitute for elm. Why? Because it has a lot of characteristics that make it desirable as an urban tree. It's tolerant to a lot of urban pressures such as uh, air pollution, road salt, construction damage, inadvertent attacks from minor pathogens and pests. And so the ash tree has grown up well with, er, with, with people. It's a tough urban tree. It provides a lot of benefits. At the same time, it can take a lot of shock. So that's why the ash tree is found very common in towns and cities in Ontario. To help maintain the uh, town street inventory, I'm developing a mathematical formula that will simulate how ash trees grow in the town of Oakville. The importance of this study is not only that it's the first one in Canada for urban trees, but also it will um, tell us how much it's going to cost us to treat a tree in the future, how big it's going to grow, and how, how impacted it's going to be by the emerald ash border in the future. So we will be able to, to simulate all that. Besides, we're uh, hoping to, be, uh, to develop a good methodology that could be used for other species and, um, and have it available for residents in the future so they could, they could see from their um, computer how their tree is going to grow and yeah, how, how big it's going to get, how the canopy is going to grow. I've been collecting the data using this tool that it's called Increment Water. And this is a sample of what I've been collecting, that it's called a cord. And this is from live standing trees like this one. If the tree has been already removed because of safety reasons mainly, and it's like um, we collect this, that it's called a cookie, then I just bring this samples to the University of Toronto. I process them and then I run an analysis to determine how old the tree is and how much is growing each year. You can see the rings of the cookie here and this would indicate how many years has and then from the distance from one ring to the other I can determine how much is growing each year. Uh, in the cookie I'm just going to measure the number of rings and with, this would tell me the age of the tree. And from the distance between one ring and the other I can estimate how much, or I can tell how much the tree grows every year, or a, a predetermined year. I'm gonna find the relationship between this, that it's already here, this information that I have here, and I'm gonna try to project it to the future after I find the relationship between this and the diameter of the tree. Oh, this is a tool that it's supposed to be drilling holes in the tree, and Basically, you just drill a hole and you go, you try to hit the center of the tree. So you get something that is similar to this and it's called a core. And you are able to see all the rings of the tree. So you can count the number of rings and estimate the age of the tree. And you can also estimate the annual growth of the tree because of um, the distance will indicate you how much um, it's growing every year. The uh, importance of this study is that it's the first one in Canada for urban trees. Uh, we're only doing it for, for ash trees, but we hope that we can develop a very good methodology so it could be used for other species. 
And uh, the, other, the other factor that is important about this research is that um, we can, you, can, you can estimate, you can simulate, you can see in the future how the tree is going to grow and what conditions are affecting its growth. I've been a municipal urban forester for over 20 years and I have never seen a threat to the urban forest like I do now with emerald ash borer. A threat to all the 177,000 ash trees in Oakville, a threat to people's property values, and ultimately a threat to potential property tax hikes to pay for the uh, devastation that this insect can cause. And we're talking unprecedented magnitude here in the billions of dollars across the provinces that are affected by emerald ash borer. So I want people to be aware that the emerald ash borer is a new problem that they need to educate themselves about and take the problem seriously, particularly if they have ash trees. They need to take action because guaranteed emerald ash borer will wipe out their ash trees unless they treat them. The town of Oakville has taken aggressive action to treat our own trees, selected number of trees on our property. This treatment program is effective, it will work, it needs to be maintained over 15 years so it's not a one-shot option, but I, I need residents to understand that the Town of Oakville Council has taken a commitment to treat its trees and we're hoping through our communications plan to encourage residents to do the same on their property. I would hate to see something happen to my tree. I am ecstatic and will do anything that we're asked to try and help it stay alive and keep our beautiful trees on our street um, as healthy as possible. We all benefit from that.